we need to talk about that. I made this video, I think, three times. This is the, this is the third, yes. So, uh, the first time around. Uh, no, let's talk about the second time around. The second time around, I used my DSLR. I'm now back at my old video camera. Uh, in the second video, I filmed with my DSLR. Uh, I bought a new microphone from uh, Amazon to give you guys the best sound possible. It sounded like the, the Stalingrad in the mid-1940s, basically. It was horrible. What about the first time then? Well, the first time was actually kind of good. It was informative, it was thorough, it was long, boring as all hell. My grandmother fell asleep to see this over from the thought of having to watch that video one more time and she doesn't even know it exists. So, I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna do uh, the mounting, but I'm not gonna do the mounting because Everything is already mounted. I'm going to show you the insides. I'm going to show you some of the BIOS features of the RQ, uh, R2 Ten2, and I'm going to show you the settings in TrueNAS. Uh, yeah, let's do it. He's coming with us. There we are. Now, um, something that hasn't worked out any time I've done this is getting the uh, lid off. Uh, yeah. Let's see how it goes. Oh, for queen and country, man! <laughs> yeah, wasn't even worried. Yeah, so this is the inside of the Dell R210. Um, as you may notice directly, uh, the hard drives are uh, indeed attached. Here I have a uh, SanDisk Cruiser FIP, I think it's called, it's a small uh, 32 gig uh, USB stick which holds the operating system, the true NAS operating system. Uh, this is the drive, this is the second drive, and as you can see they're already installed because I failed so many times I'm not gonna do it again. But yeah, you, you get the point. I'm gonna show you how they're mounted, so it's gonna be good. So what you do to get the drive out is you pull this knob and you push it this way. Like this, you can all here, whatever you want, just do this. And the drive should pop right out. If all of the knobs are aligned, here we go. Now, of course, this is plugged in, so we just unplug it. Uh, it has these four rubber grommets, two on each side. Uh, and th this is where you mount the, the screws to get it to stay in place. You don't want your drives flying around on the server, that would be bad. Uh, when you get the caddies out, the screws should be mounted here. Look! <laughs> it looks like tiny eyes and mouth. So these uh, these two knobs here, they hold the four screws, and they go right in here and here, and it goes there and over here. And uh, uh, as a pro tip, you plug your drive in before you seat it. Probably every human being alive except for me would do that, but I didn't the first time and it was quite a bit of hassle to get the drive mount. So maybe I can zoom in again. Oh, why do I even try? You can see here, well, try to point here and here and here and here. These go, oh fudge. Those four knobs go on these four uh, holes and the lead lines, you just push it in, no problem. You, you might be afraid this is gonna fall now, uh, there's a high risk of that, uh, I'm gonna put it back. Sweet and careful, sweet and careful, goddammit, you're supposed to be little friend. The drive is down, the knob is not moving because it's not seated, you just take it and you push it. You hear the click, click, clack? means it's seated. Something else to note is that this caddy is actually different from this one, this one the other one, in that it's uh, mounted upside down. And uh, that is because you have this, this plastic machine, uh, and, and then obviously the tracks and the uh, different layout, that is because you're supposed to mount the uh, optical driver if you have one. I don't, because who needs one anyway? 
but the, the, the procedure is the same here, except on beforehand you can dismount the connections carefully. The knob is directed right there, so you just you take the knob, pull it, pull it up. You can push in the back here, the drive slides right out. And here you can actually see the drive. Uh, I don't know if I said this, but I mounted two 3 terabyte Western Digital green drives. And the reason I went with green is because they're so power efficient. No, that's bullshit, it's because I had them laying around on sheet like that. So who cares? This is the hard drive. I get two of those in here. Uh, over here is the mounting holes for the uh, screws. As you can see on this one, uh, they do not look like a smiley face. Instead, you have this here, which looks like kind of a dissatisfied little being. Okay, uh, so the drive goes in the same way. Uh, it's actually practically the same mounting procedure as you can see right there. You have a, a knob right there, right there, and you have two there, you get the point. Carefully. Oh, yeah, it needs to go in like this, not like this or like this, like I did. So again, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, try to find the inner knobs. I speak like you're actually going to do this because you bought one of these. The risk is quite small, I guess. I'm not smart enough to do this. I should not. No, I should not, sir. See something else I didn't know? I did not connect the drive. And I break it as well. So connect your drive. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. So there we go. You plug in the second one, the data connection. And you just get it down here. <sighs> Done. So that's quite. Easy. Uh, you mount the drives. You mount your USB if you're using that. Otherwise, you could use a um, you could use a solid state drive. Oh my God, who says that? I mean, you can use an SSD. You put it right here or whatever you want. I guess you can put it here if you want to. But that is the uh, best place in here, I think. Put it there. Mount a SATA cable. Put a SATA power splitter on the uh, this here, and you got yourself a uh, new uh, OS drive. Zoom, 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 zoom. This little thing. So this is the DRAC that uh, stands for Dell Remote Access Management. Uh, no, it does not stand for Dell Remote Access Controller. Yeah. So what that basically means is, if you don't have an OS installed, you can get uh, you can get into the server. You can make some setting changes, some BIOS uh, changes, I believe, uh, without the uh, OS having to be alive if the server has crashed or whatever. If you just want to change something and don't want to take the server offline, you can just do that. And this is the Dell Drag 6 Express version. I actually ordered a Dell Express Enterprise version, uh, which you can very simply change out. Uh, we'll have to wait till that comes in before I change it. And uh, I think at the same time as we change this, we will install a SSD drive to host the OS. Yeah, that's basically all you need to know. Um, as I said in my first video, we got... God damn it. As I said in my first video, you have the heatsink and the RAM on here. And as I said, the RAM is uh, upgraded. Now, I did say that this came in a 4, uh, 16, and 32 gigabyte configuration. I actually think it was a 4, 8, 16, and 32 configuration. So, a little more options there. And this baby goes like that. Let's take a look at the BIOS. boot it up uh, you should not uh, forget to put the lid back on otherwise those fans will go haywire this is a very professional IT environment I just want to say that system information no inventory it's taking inventory you know we have that list and you cross off things we have memory we have a CPU uh, two hard drive didn't have that before huh. the worst thing of enterprise servers they have a real good 
system check. So it takes forever. Well, it's supposed to take forever, of course. Control E. Here we go. So now we're entering the drag. Uh, to enter the drag, you need to set a password. Uh, you do this from the BIOS. We're gonna do it. From, uh, since I've already done it, we're gonna do it. And we're gonna set a password right here. Oh, okay. That's the wrong one. I'm gonna have to do that again. Oh, let's check the manager anyway. I think I accidentally pressed F10. That means system settings. Uh, we will see. It's taking inventory again. By the way, I'm recording the screen because I don't have one of those fancy streamer cards. Yeah, that's all there is. Probably need to check this as well. This is the BIOS version. Uh, see if there's a new one. It's actually called 210. While we wait, we can check if there's a newer one. It says the newest BIOS is the 2.9. Is this server from the future? The latest BIOS is actually the R29 there. It's pretty weird. Yeah, you can see now, um, the only thing that changes when you're about to go into the boot screen is this password prompt uh, turns up. That's basically, it just says enter password, so we'll do that. Is it this one? Oh, then it's this one. Uh, you should remember your passwords and not come up with them every time you do this, because you have to reboot it again. So we're getting into the drag again, that'd be fun, huh? So we actually tried to get into both menus twice now and haven't succeeded. Drag. That's the right password, then you can continue. This just means that the iDrag is on. You can change it by doing, I think it is, yeah, it's plus and minus. You can do that plus minus. iDrag out of band interface will be disabled. LAN channel is off. We don't want to do that. We want to keep it on. So IPMI over LAN, that means you can remote into it. We'll keep that off for now. Here we got the LAN parameters. We want to change that. Uh, smart card, if you're using a smart card reader uh, to get into it. Uh, maybe if you're a business or just uh, a nerd. System services, we can check this. That's basically all you can do. Then user configuration, if you have any special uh, IPMI, or that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is also one of the first things you want to do. You want to go in here and you want to change the password for the iDRAC. If you buy these used, it could be a good option before you do that to reset it. Um, just Hit this option and press yes, and it will reset the iDRAC, and you can set a new password. Here we got the system event log, really nothing to do there. And uh, you have a special Dell uh, service to, to get into the iDRAC, so you get in via an IP if you connect it to the network, so that's, that's not a problem. And we didn't do any changes, we'll have discarded change and exit, in case we did anything, I don't think we did, but you know. We're going into the boot menu now, so we pressed F11. It said in, in the top right corner, it said enter boot menu. That's what we're going to do, and this time we're going to put in the right password. I just checked another link. Um, here is the uh, 2.10. That's the latest one. Now the password prompt should come up right there. Yeah, like that. And this one, put in your correct password, and you will get into the uh, menu. Here we go. So this is the boot menu. Um, all it shows, uh, I, I don't know if it shows up that well on the camera, but I'll just tell you. Uh, continue normal boot is the first one. Uh, select boot mode, you can change this to BIOS or UEFI. I'm gonna use BIOS because I'm old school. Uh, you can change what hardware you wanna use. These are the two storage drives I have. And these are the uh, memory sticks, so of course use that. Uh, you can change these settings, and this is what you really wanna do. I'm gonna go in here and wanna set the boot order. To do that, you just go in here, use a boot sequence, and you change to whatever one you want to use. Uh, preferably use your boot drive, but you can use your storage drive, it won't work, but you can, you can do it. system setup. Ah, it works the same. 
There we go. So we're in the BIOS now. Uh, you get the time and date. Hopefully those are right. You got your memory settings here. We want to change any timers or anything. Uh, you get your CPU settings here. Uh, something you would actually want to do to check in here if you're going to do some kind of virtualization. You should check so that the virtualization technology is enabled. That's basically that's V mode. Uh, if you want power, you can check the turbo mode is uh, it's engaged. It's good for you know power. And there's probably a hundred different things you can do here. Uh, check them out if you want to. Say the settings. You can see your drives. You can see the capacity. You can change. Uh, the drive corresponding uh, information. Boot settings, of course, boot in BIOS mode, and you can boot sequence to try if you want to do that. Integrated services, this, you know, like network card uh, settings and that kind of stuff. You can actually see the MAC addresses of your NIC in here as well. If you want uh, to know what uh, network card has what corresponding MAC address, this is way to see that. PCI RQ assignment, uh, actually, I have no idea. Probably have a lot of good things. Serial communication. Uh, if you have a, if you want to go through the management board or the serial board to do uh, configuration, power management. This, say like this: if you have it as me, in an office space where you're gonna do other stuff, and you might not want this to sound like the back seat of an airplane. Uh, you should change it to minimum power. That means that the fans will will go on slow time. If you change this to maximum power uh, by going here and pressing your plus. Oh, that's always dependent, but this one, maximum performance. That means that your CPU is going to tremble up, and that means that your fans are probably going to tremble up as well. You can actually change that as well if you want to have minimum power or maximum performance. You do that, and you have maximum performance all the time. It means this will be loud. Why system security is really the, the tab you, that I can say for sure you want to go into. That is because here you set your password. Now your system, the system is locked, of course. Because I set the password, and you do that by setting these. Here you can change what the power buttons and my buttons do if you want them enabled or not. My, if you have like people coming around your servers and pressing buttons, tick, 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 you might want the power button to be disabled. Just a tip. Keyword unlock, report keyword errors, F2 one prompt errors. That's just basic settings you can enable if you want to. So yeah, that's the BIOS.